and it's out of our sin that we let go wrongness. Let the Lord that shares mercy. Whatever we don't do with patience, we, 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 is, we can make mistakes along the way, and um, it can be a total error, so to say. And that's why the Bible tells us in the church of our 40 and 31 that they that wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength. As much as we have decided to be patient and wait on Him, the time we are waiting, He will be renewing our strength by encouraging us and telling us that we will soon finish, we will soon finish. And finally, with His help, we will finish. And we will finish well. Amen. 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 So it is good to run our race with patience. I pray God will give us patience in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <coughs> we are looking at uh, Hebrews chapter 12. From verse 1 to 4. Hebrews 12, 1 to 4. First of all, it, it talks about the cloud of witnesses. Um, as we've been told, cloud is, I mean, as we all know, cloud is upward. We don't talk of cloud on the ground, we're talking about actually talking about what is referred to as the church triumphant. We are talking about those who have uh, made it to heaven, who are watching us as we are running the race. Uh, people who are there who are cheering us as we are running the race, assuring us that uh, it can be done. But after all, we've done it, so you can do it also. For example, in Second Timothy chapter four, verse seven to eight, Second Timothy four seven to eight, one of the people in that cloud is uh, Apostle Paul. He said, "Yes, I'm finished well. There's a crown waiting for me, but." I'm not the only one who can wear a crown. Anyone who loves the appearance of Jesus Christ can also make it like I've done. Second thing, of course, that I mentioned is about the fact that we have to run the race with patience. Mm. That's uh, telling us that the race to heaven is not a sprint. It's a long distance run. We only know where we start. We cannot really predict where we are going to end the race. Um, when we got born again in the early 1970s, mm. we were expecting Jesus Christ to return any moment. As a matter of fact, the way Christians greeted each other or one another in those days is uh, uh, keep expecting the return of the Lord. The expectation was so much that some students in the University of Lagos were thinking of abandoning their studies thinking what is the use, you will soon be here, what do the degrees for? Um, I was one of those who had to encourage them to say, no, no, it's a occupy till I come. So, let's get busy. If, when he comes, let, let him meet us very busy. Um, I know a great man of God of, at that time who started a master's degree, but never finished it. Because at a stage he just felt, and I will see my time doing research. 
they love the group of our very soon anyway. That means I will get busy many souls. He hasn't come yet, but he will come tomorrow. So the race to heaven is a marathon. You run it as if it's going to end tomorrow, but you also run it as if it may not end for the next hundred years. So you run the race as if it's a marathon. Then he says we should lay aside every weight. You don't run a race people want to win uh, carrying baggages. If there's anything that won't let you run light, because you must run this race light, you must get rid of them. If relatives are going to slow you down, you have to ask relatives to go. Uh, Genesis 13 from verse 1 to 18. Genesis 13 from verse 1 to 18. When he became obvious to Abraham that Lot was an excess baggage, he dropped him, told him to, to go aside from him. The Almighty God, the Lord Jesus himself, your best friend, gave an advice. In Matthew chapter 5 from verse 29 to 30, Matthew 5, 29 to 30, he said, if your eyes, it's going to cause you to sin, block it out. If your right hand is going to cause you to offend, cut it off. In other words, in the journey to heaven, if you know it's your eyes that is going to cause you trouble, do something about the act. If you have happy space of your hand, do something about the hand. Um, I don't know if I'll share with you the testimony of uh, one of the brothers. He said he, he, the problem he had, and he had it before he came on again, was that he just wanted to touch a woman, touch a girl. So even in the church, he will make sure he sits very close to the eye. So whenever any girl is passing by, he will stretch his hand slightly out of the way, uh, out of the eye, so that the woman passing by can brush his hand as uh, <laughs> she's passing through. And then one day, he read this passage, if your hand is going to cause you to offend, cut it off. So he said, Lord, I don't have the grace to cut off this hand, but I can do something. Anytime I am in the church, I will keep my hands in my pocket. He said, the moment he started doing that, suddenly, Whatever force was pushing him to do what he had been doing departed because the force realized there's no use using this fellow any longer. There was another brother who said his own problem was that he was always politating. Very handsome young man that he had that problem. So he said, finally he cried to God. Almighty God, if I'm going to fornicate ever again, if I'm even going to think about it, make me impotent. The moment he made that decision, he said anytime he saw a beautiful woman, beautiful woman passing by and his mind wanted to say it was a lack of back. You want to get me into trouble. Get away from here. You have to take some drastic steps to cut away whatever is going to cause you to sin. He said you have to resist sin unto the blood. This is not a joking matter. The journey to heaven 
is worth every sacrifice. Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14 to 18. Second Corinthians 6, 14 to 18 tells us that if you are keeping a company of friends and you discover that this company of friends, they are not going where you are going, he said, get out from among them and be ye separate. Then God said, I will receive you. You may need to get rid of even your friends. I told you that before we were born again, we had many friends, among them sailors who traveled the world. And when they returned, they would bring us gifts of all manners of drinks that they have come across in their journey. All manners of hot drinks. And then, because our house was always uh, soft, of all these things. Many friends will come. Oh, we are passing by and we decide to, to visit you. Uh, we can't pass the house of the king without saying hello to the king. And then we will do what well, they want, uh, scotch on the rocks, popping, uh, you know, the kind of language that we spoke in those days. Then we became born again. And we read that not only are you to avoid alcohol, you are not even to entertain others with alcohol. So when our friends come, we say, okay, what do you have? Oh, you know, you know my stuff. I know we don't have that anymore. But we have Coke, we have Fanta, we have bitter lemon. And what kind of nonsense is this? And one by one, they all left. We discover that we were friends only because of alcohol. And God replaced them with many brothers and sisters. You have to cut off every weight that can slow you down. If it is food that can slow you down, cut it off. If it is too much sleep, do something about it. If it is talking too much, do something about it. If it's a moral thought, do something about it. Because heaven is precious. My prayer is that God will give you the grace to be able to resist unto sin. Mm -hmm. Striving. Mm -hmm. And resist unto blood, striving against sin, so that you'll be able to make it to heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.